Just because I'm transferring to another school doesn't mean I'm going to turn into a completely different person, Barry. Oh, I get it. Now it's just another high school, is it? I thought any Drew was one of these fancy private schools like Harvard or something. What have you got against Edinger anyway? Well, I'll tell you what I got against. It's just a bunch of preppy wimps running around with blazers and gold-plated pencils, and they got buildings named after their families and stuff like that. <laughs> so when did you become an expert on prep schools? You got the situation under control. Yeah, sure do. Thanks for the offer. property now don't cross me John this school is your last chance I'm your 
roommate. Oh, hi, I'm Susie Marmont. Andrea Miller. So, you are a girl. I think so, yeah. Well, I was sort of wondering. There aren't too many of us around. Oh, really, Susie? Well, I thought I was going to have to fight off all these boys by my little old self. <laughs> you ain't going to catch me complaining, honey. Know what I mean? Andrea, this is Mary Beth. She lives right across the house. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Well, there aren't going to be enough outlets in this room. So I guess the lace curtain is back my side of the room. Thanks a lot. You're quite welcome. Have a nice day. No, this place smells of success. I love it. Me too. Real friendly people you got around here. Susie, this is Barry. Oh, your boyfriend. Huh. Ex-boyfriend lately, huh? Oh, yeah? Jeez, my car. I gotta go. I don't want to get stuck on the road at night, okay? Bye, Susie. Bye. See ya. Be back in a couple minutes. Come on, don't be like that. You gotta grow up sometime. No, I don't give up easy, Andrea. I'll be back. No, you're not so mature yourself. deliriously happy to be away from home. We've got the opportunity here to have some serious fun. Yes. I mean, think about it. We're the first girls ever at this place. You can have all those cute guys begging for our bodies. I think I'm diving onto heaven. <laughs> Listen, it's going to sound completely bizarre to you, but I did come here to study. Oh, give me a break. You know, but Susie, did you see that guy who was talking to me outside before? He was tall with dark hair. Well, you're not wasting any time, are you? Really, you barely got the long-distance boyfriend out the door. Already you're checking out the locals. You know, it's gonna be an interesting year. Susie, it's not like I was in love with him, okay? But he was just staring right through me, you know? Look, look, you don't need to make any excuses to me. I mean, there's only so much temptation that a girl can resist. So, honey, why bother? Amen. <laughs> hey, I'm going jogging. Y'all want to come? No, Andrea and I have our own form of exercise, don't we? Uh, no comment. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Catch y'all later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Know that there's a 10 to 1 ratio of guys to girls here? Oh, I'm sure that had nothing to do with your decision to enroll Of here. course not. <laughs> Andrea, look at the dreamboat up in the window. He's the one I was telling you about. Come on. Oh, yeah? Let's wait. 
Susie. Where'd he go? <laughs> Funny. He's cute. You think he saw us? I hope not. Look, Andrea, if you like him, you should do something about it. I don't even know him. Well, if you don't, I will. You need a chaperone. Good morning. I am Dr. Beauregard Eisner, Dean of Ettinger Academy. On behalf of the entire faculty, I extend a warm welcome to our new students, especially you young women who are the very first to be admitted to Edinger Academy in our long and rich history. Who's that, big man on campus? At Edinger, we believe in the reward for high endeavor. The soundness of the Academy's methods is attested to by the increasing numbers of our successful alumni, senators, governors, Edinger precepts. Somebody's tuition check must have even bounced. reached as high as the over office. So you see, the future belongs to those with the courage to seize it. Again, I bid you welcome and leave you with these immortal words. Our school motto, Carpe Diem, seize the day. <laughs> See, my whole theory is inbreeding. I believe that rich people marry other rich people, and they have stupid offspring. And, and the, the, the extent of this idiocy is directly proportional to how much money they have. I call it the kooky cash theory. It's very widely accepted. And can I interest you in one of these beautiful rock tumbled carrots? Oh, no potatoes. Uh, thank you. If you give me potatoes, I'll kill your entire family. I guess I wanted my chicken a la mode anyway. That's, that's fine. Well, it looks delicious, though. It's like close encounters. I'll have a double order of potatoes. You can't exactly call that tradition. Yeah, I'd call it neo-fascist capitalism. All right, I gotta go. I got three duty slips this week. You got three? How do we get off with that I stuff? I don't know. I gotta work for the blood drive. You wanna give? Me? Uh, no. No way. I hate the sight of blood, especially when it's my own. <laughs> so, uh, got a boyfriend or anything? I have a boyfriend surplus at the moment. Oh, good. You'll just have to yearn for me from afar. <laughs> okay. I'll see you. Come up and visit sometime, all right? I'm new here. What's yours? Hi, Emerson. Don't waste your time. She's already going steady with a football player. Ooh, really? Well, what's your name, then? Get Lost. Is that Get short for Gertrude or Getty? Susie, hmm. this is Paul Emerson. Hi, Susie. Want to go out? Uh -huh. Andrea, check out that guy. Two rows back, black sweater. Forget <laughs> it. It's Philip, my roommate. He's a total droid. Brain dead. You know, really stupid. Drooler. Lewis Philo, and this is Biology 47. For the first couple of lectures, we'll be dealing with the anatomy of the brain. And later on in the semester, each of you will have a chance to dissect your own animal brain. At that point, some of you will be delighted that this is not the last class before lunch. The course will touch on some of the many philosophical questions associated with modern biology. <clears throat> we'll look at the newest work on brainwave studies regarding such phenomena as uh, hypnosis and meditation and conditioning. The brain as a computer, which can be reprogrammed. To all you new students, 
I can get to even look at me in this school are freshman geeks like Emerson. Oh, come on. He's a nice boy. Honey, nice is how your mother describes her best friend, zip-faced son. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sexy is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Pink Oof. He is a god, isn't he? I'm serious. Okay, what are you two up to? Hey, I'm just trying to find a decent radio station. Think of all the music stuff they've been playing around this school. Hello? Hey, baby. Huh, how are you? Fine. You ready to quit yet? I'll pick you up on my new bike. Well, used bike. Nah, new to me anyway. Jerry, I'm uh -huh. not gonna quit. Well, maybe you would if you knew more about the place. Guess what I found out today about your fancy little prep school? You know the guy that started the place? He's a psycho. Psycho? Yeah, Colonel Lettinger. Got thrown out of the U.S. Cavalry for scalping Indians in the 1800s. He and his buddies, they started a group called uh, the Brotherhood of Eternal Knowledge. What the hell are you talking about? In the library. I checked the whole history about it. I know what you're trying to do. You know, I got this scholarship, and I'm going to see it through. I have to go. Andrea. Freaking out, man. I swear he's willing to say anything to get me to leave this school.
We will commence the new term with something novel. Uh, a translation of Julius Caesar's diatribe on the Gallic Wars. Mr. Fellner, if you would be so kind as to begin, Mr. Fellner. What? The text on page eight, Mr. Fellner. You do have the text. Gosh, I guess I must have left it someplace. You don't have the text. You may look on with your neighbor. Ominous, vicentu, stint. Translation, please, Mr. Fellner. Ominous, vicentu, sent. Translation, please, Mr. Fellner. Hey, give me a break, all right? I know this stuff. Translation, Mr. Fellner. You're supposed to have this prepared for the first class, Mr. Fellner. Look, I'm not a personal friend of Julius Caesar, okay? Dubitas, ex flagellatus. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You're a sick fuck. You know, Mary Beth, now that I've been tapped to join the initiates, I think I have a chance for the presidency. That's wonderful. Hi, Mary Beth. Room for one more? I believe we were just leaving. <laughs> but I'm in your Latin class. My name's Andrea Miller. Look, I had two years of that stuff, okay? And I thought if you had some time, I could give you a hand. What's this a joke? You working for your fucking Girl Scout badge or something? No, I was just trying to help. Wait, um... Backwards, I just say. Uh, I hate this place. And then why, why did you come here? Look, no one asked my opinion. My father went here and he wants me to be an asshole and fascist just like him. How about you? No, I'm gonna try and stay up and get through some of this. Caged inside. 
him in. You don't have to come in if you don't want to. So what's so urgent? You know. You know, I've read about these, and did you know at one time that it, they were actually alive and they grew this way? I know. They're very healing, too. You know, some people think that we could use them, you know, and harness their energy somehow. I think your clock has stopped. That clock stopped many, many years ago. Why don't you get it fixed? A memory. It's a pin screen. You want to see how it works? Watch. <laughs> Your turn. Close your eyes and push up against it gently. Ah. Trust me. Go on. Oh. No, no, no. I want to keep this one. I can't take this place anymore. I can't take any more shit from this place or my dad. Are you sure about this? Yeah. I've never been so sure about anything in my life. Wait a sec. Wait a second. Wait a second. Um, look, I really appreciate you trying to help me the other day. That was really nice of you. Um, but I've got to go. Get to
Why did you go tonight? What the fuck do you want? friends since I've been at this place. Well, thanks a lot. Well, you know, present company excluded, of course. I don't know, it's weird, though. It's, it's true what they say. This, this environment really changes people. I feel myself getting boring all the time. It's like dullness is a contagious disease around here. Yeah, well, don't let it rub off on me. <laughs> well, I gotta get going. Uh, see you later? Yeah. If you want to call me or anything, can you just talk? Thank you. Good luck with your paper. Mm. See you later. Bye. Andrea. <laughs> Is he gone? Yes. Yes. Good. I feel bad sending him away, but I have this test. Don't even waste the energy. You know anything about Shakespeare? No. No, I don't. Now, fair Hippolyta, a nuptial hour dawns on a pace. And oh, methinks how slow this old poet. <laughs> Graceful in the water. Maybe I was wrong. About what? You. I'm dropping your class. Why? You know why? You're my teacher. You really think dropping my class is going to change anything? I have to get going. Why don't I wait and walk with you? Okay, I'd want to.
Looks like you're getting a lot of studying done here. Barry, what are you doing here? Who the hell is this guy to you, Andrea? You're not a student here, are you? No, I'm not. It's OK. He's a friend of mine. A friend? Is that what I am? A friend? Is he a friend, too? Excuse me, Dr. Philo. What? Dean Eisner wants to see you right away. Tell him I'll be right there. Are you going to be OK? Good night. Barry, please don't act this way. It's really hard for me Look, here. Do you want him? Huh? Okay. You got him, all right? Barry. Are you trying to ruin everything we've ever worked for? Chasing after an 18-year-old at your age. What was previously merely indiscretion on your part has escalated to the point where we risk losing everything. I don't want her harmed. Do you understand? Harmed. We are merely going to perform a simple operation on her. The self-same operation you yourself have performed on hundreds of other students. I won't let you do this, Colonel. You won't let me? <laughs> you force me to remind you that I am in charge, not only of this entire academy, but of your life and the lives of our colleagues as well. Bullshit. Don't you threaten me, Eisner. Control yourself, Dr. Philo. And we shall be forced to do it for you. You are not indispensable. What are you going to do? Cut off my serum dosage? My God, you'd do that, wouldn't you? It is an option. You will continue to assume your normal duties and conduct classes. Here we go. So, this is what's become of you and me. You may go. So you didn't come to the game, huh? I couldn't go. I was hoping at least that you would be there. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm great. We lost bad. Listen, Andrea, about the other night, I just want to say I'm sorry. I acted like an idiot. Can we just erase everything that happened that night? No, we can't, Barry. You've been acting like this ever since I got the scholarship. I'm sorry. It's just, I, I love you so much. It's not gonna solve anything, Barry. Come on, don't I have the right to know what's going on here? There's nothing going on here. Oh. Speak of the devil. <laughs> What's the matter? Can't you find a girl your own age? Get off the campus. Now. Fuck you. Come on. Let's get out of here. Hey, hey. You get your hands off me, man. I'm 
sorry. I'm so immature. Is Emerson around? He's at the infirmary. What happened to him? Checked with me. His body couldn't take the procedure. Where are their minds? No one thought to check his records for something like hemophilia. We had to move ahead without you. You've been far too reluctant these days and endangering all of us. My discretion has kept this school alive. You see. Then perhaps you'll use your discretion and lock up. It's late.
My sad duty to have to inform you of the death of one of our students, Paul Emerson, owing to a medical complication that was not on his record, the infirmary staff were unable to counter the effect of a blood clot on the brain. And may I ask you all to bow your heads and observe a moment of silence. Hi, Mrs. Jaffe. Can I talk to Barry? I'm sorry, dear. Barry's not home right now. Oh, um, well, could you just tell him to call me? Of course. Is there anything I can help you with? No, it's not urgent. There's something wrong, dear. No, I'm fine. All right, I'll tell him if you call. Okay, thanks. Gentlemen and lady, this morning we're going to discuss the Cavalier period. Miss Miller, here's a question for you. The Cavalier period, what do we mean by it? Um. Mr. Fellner? It is that era in British history that is named for the endearments of Charles I in his conflict with the Parliament. And how is this relevant to the study of English literature? There is an important school of 17th century poetry often associated with this era, sir. Very good, John. Very good. You're coming along nicely. Wait, wait, Fellner, wait a second, wait a second. Why, hello, Andrea Miller. Are you okay? Why, yes, why wouldn't I be okay? Well, I thought you were leaving. You said you hated this place. Well, I've changed my mind. I'm dead. Hey, come on, you haven't even started getting ready yet. I will. I just, I can't seem to get started. Well, let's move it. We gotta get going. <laughs> I'll meet you there, okay? I promise. You promise? I promise. <laughs> you better not shine me, girl. I won't. I have to talk to you. Of course, what about? I want to know what really happened to Emerson. 
Who's Colonel Edinger, and what's going on in this place? Sit down, Trent. I'm going to try to explain this to you. But it may be difficult to understand. How old do you think I am, Andrea? 30? I was born February 3rd, 1885. That makes me 102 years old. So you're 102. What's that make Dean Eisner? Colonel Edinger? Yes. I love you, I love you, yes. And I wish you were Good God. Who is responsible for this? Travis. Listen, Susie, um, you gotta pretend you're my date, okay? Or else these guys are gonna throw me out on my ass. Oh, sure. Come on, it's great to see a real person. Have you seen Andrea? Yes, yeah, she'll be here in a minute. Come on, let's dance. Dance, dance, dance. When Ettinger was in the cavalry, he captured an Indian medicine man who showed him a way to prolong life indefinitely. But there was a catch. Once you began, you were hooked. You had to take it every day. Hooked on what? The process involved the mixing of blood and brain tissue from a living person. Back then, nobody asked any questions about dead Indians. But eventually, Ettinger was dismissed. We were developing a technique of helping brain-damaged patients by transmitting electromagnetic waves to a crystal implanted in the cranium. It would substitute for damaged brain tissue. Are you telling me that killed Emerson because you developed some kind of serum? We don't kill anyone. This was a terrible accident, Andrea. I, what I do, is to implant a crystal in the brain, which compensates for the loss of certain brain so functions. So that's the trade-off. You live forever, and the students get lobotomized? It's not lobotomy, Andrea. These people lead very, very successful lives. More successful than if they hadn't had the implant, because there are no more neuroses, no more agonizing over things, no more... There's no more anything! What you're doing is sick! You can't replace human emotions with a crystal! It's like vampires. You think you could heat it up a little bit? Uh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs>
Whoa. Andrea, I got oh, your message. You okay? Oh, God, Barry, I'm so glad to see you. I don't understand you. What's going on? This place is really fucking weird, Barry. I told you that. I told you that the first day you got here. Okay, I know, but listen, we have to get some evidence, okay, and take it to the police. For what? Evidence for what? I'll explain everything later. Right now, we've got to get to the infirmary. Okay. All right. deviate from the morning routine. However, in the circumstances, Lewis? It's a few hours early. But I don't think it will upset the daily pattern. Craziest damn thing I ever heard. So you say there's some kind of drug ring being operated by the faculty at Ettinger. It's a pretty wild claim, Andrew. It's not a drug ring. You said they're all taking drugs. It's not really a drug, okay? It's a serum. They make it themselves using chemicals from the human body. Manufacturing drugs on the premises? You're not listening to me. The faculty is making this serum by using chemicals from the students' brains. They're actually operating on them, and when they're done with them, they're, they're different. They 
craziest damn thing I ever heard. Tell me of the boy, Lewis. I'll operate on him in the morning. Mm. Tell the infirmary to keep him under until then. Very good. See to it. And now what of the absent Miss Miller? What do we do now? Gentlemen, we have no option but to wait. When we get her back. Yes, Lewis? I want her, Doctor. I can control her. I give you my word. You have absolutely no say in this matter whatsoever, Lewis. You have almost wrecked us. Without me, none of this would even have been possible. Miss Miller, when she is apprehended, will be operated upon just the same as with every other student. Clear? Okay. Thanks, Chief Phyllis. up to a cup of coffee if you want it. Thanks. Craziest damn thing I ever heard. How are you feeling, Andrea? I think she's strong enough now for surgery. You had a nasty little accident. You could have been killed. Stop struggling. You're not going anywhere. And when you wake up, the world will be a simpler place. Listen, your boyfriend's here. Harry, he seems to be pretty happy. Wait. The procedure's been rescheduled for after the morning injections. Dean Eisner wants to perform the surgery himself. Thank you, doctors. Very well, Dr. Philo. Thank you, doctors. Pay attention, Andrea. There's a lot you don't know in this very little time. I've got to meet Eisner right away. Can you stand? Yes. Okay. 
I don't trust you. You've got to trust me, Andrea. Believe me, you've got to trust me. Meet me at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Andrea, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning at the door to the faculty building. 7 o'clock, say it. 7 o'clock. The faculty building. The faculty building. Tomorrow morning, okay? Why? There's no time to explain. I'm late already. Now go. Andre, <laughs> go. Act like everybody else. Hello, Andrea. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just had a little fall. But they fixed me up at the infirmary. Isn't it great? What? Both of us being tapped, silly. And Barry, too. Barry? Phil and I just saw him this afternoon with Fellner. Is he all right? Well, of course. Aren't we all? Well, I have a good deal of studying to do, so I must go. Good night. Good night. We cannot allow this ridiculous romantic to endanger us, Father. Exactly what I've been saying from the very beginning. We are almost on the verge of control. We cannot allow anything. Proceed. How many times have I told you never to bring coffee into this room? You're absolutely, absolutely right. Hurry. It's very little care. Listen carefully. If anything happens to me, I can't help you. Under the bust in my room, there's a cassette. Take it to the top room in the supply building. What? It's the transmitter room. Transmitter room? Replace the cassette that's playing. I don't understand. The music you've been hearing around the school? Yeah. Intonations transmitted to the students' crystals. That's how we control them. My tape will destroy it all. What about the wine cellar? Are you going to destroy the serum? Just get the tape, Andrea. Why are you doing this? I am retiring. Dr. Philo. I do hope we didn't interrupt anything. Where is Miss Miller, Dr. Philo? She's gone. How interesting. But she has been here, hasn't she, Lewis? Remember Dr. Walker? Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't want to live any longer, and he refused to take his serum. It was a very painful death. I feel nothing. 30 seconds, I don't feel anything. Yes, yes. I don't think the dosage was strong enough. Wait a minute, something's wrong. You're all looking very... Give me that.
You son of a bitch! the cellar before she destroys every bottle. Come on, come on, move! Save the serum, you fools. Goodbye, Dr. Philo. Have a pleasant soldier in hell. I'll see you there. Fortunately, I do not depend upon the faculties of blood serum for my survival. I had the foresight to provide myself with a batch of my gold. Oh. Oh. You crying little bitch! Did you really think that after all these years, I could allow you and your love life to interfere with my work? Thanks to you, we have a critical shortage of serum. Uh. Since you're so drowsy already, I think we can dispense with the administration of anesthetic. Ah, oh, I haven't used these instruments in years. I do hope they're still sterile. I'm not as skillful a surgeon as dear Lewis. Dr. Philo, of course, is well known for his bedside manner. I am not. I want you to see it as it happens to you. You'll find this most instructive. Can you see? Hmm? Now, prepare to scream. <coughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. It's so dull. <coughs> Friend Philo let me off. You got yourself quite an education, didn't you? <coughs> Go 
Come on. Let's go. I don't want you to see me like this. What can I do? You know, it's not so bad, Andrea. I don't know what I was afraid of all these years. It's a kind of grace. Don't. You've got to go now. Please. Andrea. These guys are on our ass, man. What the hell are we doing here, huh? Okay, we gotta replace the tape that's playing here. What tape? Oh, shit, I don't have it. Uh, it's what's controlling them. These tapes? Well, destroy the tapes, no, Sam, man. It's the, it's the cassette tape. Wait, I got a tape. No. I got a cassette no, that's tape. That's not gonna here. work. It's a good tape. Come on, baby, do it for me, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. 